Hello everyone, it's good to see you and to invite you to join us at the European Commission display where really soon we are going to start a dialogue with our citizens. We are going to talk about a very important topic. Important topic, food waste, it is a very important problem. And probably, as you know, every person in Lithuania each year throws away 50 kilos of food, at least, that is at least 50 kilos, everyone else in Europe also throws away a lot. Then a big part of the world struggling from hunger doesn't have food. We are going to talk about this problem and how to solve it. I'm really glad to introduce to you the participants of this panel. Firstly, European Commissioner responsible for food, protection and health, Vitanis and Drukaitis. Mr. Vitanis, it's good to see you. Thank you. And Ursula Hudson. She's a professor from Munich and she's going to talk about food waste. Madam, it's really a big pleasure to have you here. Uh, please take your seats. Uh, we will try to connect audience with you. Firstly, I want to ask the audience, please raise your hands if you have thrown away food, something you bought, didn't even had a chance to open and had to throw away just by looking at the label. Almost anonymous, almost anonymous. Mr. Commissioner, does it happen to you? I raised my hand with everyone else. And how do you feel? Bad. It's a bad feeling, to be honest. There's nothing to hide. You can put it in an image. As an example, I weighed 81 kilos. Imagine next to me a box filled with 173 kilos of food, of good, good food. Good food. And you'll see what each year someone in Europe throws away and that's 20% of what industry provides us with. But they do not know that we buy, look at it, look at the label, see that it is expired and throw it away. They don't know that. It's not only that they don't know, it's more that they don't care that we bought and discarded 20% of their produce in the European Union, which is made for consuming or export. 20% of good food. Worse is that we throw away our respect for food. Bread is holy. It's something. It is something that is deep inside. It's in the culture where it is said that to throw food away isn't appropriate. It's uh, insulting to us what to say about solidarity. Oda must mention that there's a lot of starving people in the world. There's also a lot of hungry people in Lithuania. The world is here. In the European Union, almost 55 million Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Romania, Poland and elsewhere, also Great Britain and Germany, 55 million people every second day can't afford to buy food, can't afford good food, satisfying food. This is Mrs. Ursula. She came here from a very good associ association called Slow Food. This association fights with fast food, fights the industrialized production, which produces a lot of safe food. But it doesn't mean that the the food is healthy or fresh. And that's, then again, we have the waste problem. 
and throw away 88 million tons of good food a year. The association counted that 143 billion euros are wasted each year. I'm looking at Kazimira Svenditska. He would throw a stone at me if I threw so much of his production. Without a doubt, these numbers are very dramatic. And if we were to count how much water is used for one steak, and how much for one pineapple, and suddenly it's not ripe enough, and we throw it away, but it did use the water, and if we were to look at how much water, how much usable water we have in the world, drinkable water, the numbers are dramatic, we don't think about it, we just don't think about it, there's too little attention to all the dramatic repercussions. My weight is 81.6 kilos. Imagine how uncomfortable it is to say at the end of the year that I threw away thrice as much food as Odemus waits for example. There's nowhere to go or hide. That's why today we have this discussion. Let's talk. Let's discuss. The event was a very, was of very high quality. The platform about food waste was very good. Mrs. Ursula was part of it and would really like it for us to exchange opinions because it breaks my heart. Thank you, Commissioner, for your introduction during the political forum. One astonishing number was named. One third of food is wasted by people worldwide. Humankind wastes one third of produced food. One third of what is made, it was said by the Food and Farming Organizations and by the Secretary General of the United Nations. I want to address our guest from Germany. Why are people throwing away food? It's so expensive. What is happening with us? Apologies first that I can't speak your language, so I have to answer in English and uh, put microphone and headset up and down, so it's complicated. Um, thanks for inviting me to speak to you here. Yes. Why do people waste food? Slow food would say because they have lost the connection to food, to producers, to the land, and therefore don't understand the real value of food anymore. They understand the price. In Germany, Germany is one of those countries where food is very affordable. Within Europe, it has almost the lowest price of food. Um, it's highly industrialized food, um, and people when they don't understand it anymore, they don't know what they really do. When I heard about the figures of food waste the commissioner was first um, mentioning, I just couldn't believe it. I just thought, am I part of it? Do I do that too? And I started to observe myself, and of course I do. Um, I'm very happy that I have got a garden and a compost bin, so I can basically return it into the eternal cycle, um, most of it which is um, a way of avoiding it. But I observed myself and I thought it's the same. Slow food would then say, well, we have to work rather hard on re-establishing the connection between the farmer, the person who produces your food, and yourself, because this is our experience. We do a lot on education, food education, everywhere in the world. People who know where their food really comes from. So they know their farmer, they know their face, they know their hands, they know the animals in his, in his shed. Um, they do not waste a crumb of cheese rind when it's edible. They do not waste the tiniest bit of food because it has a face, it has, a, it has an origin. Though if you buy cheaply, I don't know, three pork chops for in a special offer for two euro fifty in a German supermarket, frozen, you stick it in your freezer. There it sits for half a year. You take it out. It is rather icy on top. 
it's easy to throw it in the bin because you have con no connection to it. That's one big reason. The other reason is that we have more and more individualized lifestyles. You know, we are fairly free in what we do. Today we shop and think we cook something great tomorrow for our partner, but tomorrow the partner comes home and says, oh, I'm so tired, let's go out and eat. And when we do that, then things sit in the fridge. We don't plan properly anymore. And I'm always talking from a German or from an English perspective. I spend half my time in the UK, so I can look at these two countries. Um, and this is something really to be avoided. And if you haven't lost the connection to where the origins of food, then don't lose it. If you have lost, start helping people to reestablish the connections to where the food comes from. This is actually, I think, the key, really. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, this is a dialogue. Since this is a dialogue with the citizens, I want to address the public. Can I talk to you? Does it happen to you that you are eating, cannot finish your portion, for example, at home? What do you do then? Sometimes it happens, not often, but it does. What I do with the food when I can't finish it? At home we have animals and birds, so this is how you are solving this problem. Can I ask you a question? You know, not that often, because I'm always thinking when, where, what and how am I going to eat? And if sometimes it happens, it breaks my heart, because it's like a tradition I learned from my parents, that you have to respect and value food. You know, we are Lithuanians and then we celebrate Christmas or Easter, our tables are breaking from abundance of food, is it true? It's breaking probably even a week after the celebrations and uh, later our hearts are breaking for all of you can't finish and eat it all. Kazimeras, I know your name, does it happen to you that half of your plate is full and it breaks your heart? Of course, it hurts, but since I live in the suburbs, in the village, I don't really have a problem with it. But I would like to talk about solving this problem. Mr. Vitanis was talking about bread, about our holy food. Let's see, we have a lot of different, various sorts of bread in the supermarkets. Usually you bought it, but in the packaging is for a very big loaf of bread, not half of it, but full loaf of bread. If the family is made of one or two persons, of course it's too big for them, I would agree to pay more for different packaging, so they could make the portion smaller, maybe half of the loaf. I don't know how it is in other countries, I haven't noticed, but I think if we had smaller options, the conception of our holy bread would definitely improve. Understood, very good. I'm excited that we are not only talking about the problem, but also about possible solutions. We can discuss them soon, but I want to talk to a couple more people. But we walk here to the opposite side, we'll equal the balances of the genders. Can I ask you a question? No, okay, can I speak to you? My name is Oli Rimas. What is your name? Imantas. Great, can I ask you a question? Oh, you want to talk? Okay, let's talk. Exciting. Very often we are drinking coffee, but here in Lithuania, I don't know what kind of quality it is, but for example in Germany, Berlin, first class coffee, when they bring it here, it's amazing, the same packaging, the same name, the price is almost about the same, but the quality is not. Yes, it's a wonderful question, let's start from the quality and later talk about the bread. Commissioner? Yes, quality problem is a very, very big matter in all of the European Union. Not only do they bring it from Berlin, but also export it from Paris to Brussels, from Luxembourg to Paris, from Malta to Sardinia, everywhere we have problems with quality and price. Sometimes people are seeing the same name, you know, 
but the quality is different, price is different, and what is worse, if you live in one place and don't travel abroad, you're always presented with the same choice, the same product in the shelf, and you don't even know that there's other products. And then you get something from Berlin, you are surprised that the taste is different. That's talking about food. It's even worse with the chemicals, which you do not eat, but still the quality is also different. For example, for washing powder, you get them from Berlin, they wash your clothes, cleaner. That's when I remember a joke. It's an old joke. When you went in your shop in Soviet times and uh, ask for the washing powder. They used to ask if you had any relatives abroad. If you said, no, I don't have anyone, but what if I had? Would you give me better washing powder? I'm just joking and that's the point. The double quality of the goods for the same product, the name of the brand in the European Union really exists. But don't make the mistake of thinking that they are first class and we are second class. They are already malicious about that. This problem is known everywhere, in other markets too, just that in other countries there is a bigger choice, but companies they don't make it that as a strategy. Kazimeras knows marketing strategies. They get into certain city or town and supply the same product all the time, although the name might be Coca-Cola, but the quality and the price are different. It means we have a problem with dishonest informing, with improper competition, with markets, isolation, with consumerism to certain good, certain goods, and for these reasons. For this reason we have now made new deal. A new deal, a new consumer agreement. It is a very long document, which gives right to the national quality assurance inspection and consumer associations. Now that they have gotten a lot more power in their hands to fight this situation, on the other hand, if it's because of the improper competition, for the first time we agreed upon a collective lawsuit. Of course, that lawsuit can only be issued by an association, for example, the Athenian Consumer Association, but in no way the law firms, so that they could not start earning money from it. This is a topic of double quality, a very complicated thing. With this problem we are working every day, so that in the case of double quality goods, under the same logo, that the company would not cheat people, they must then be informed, they must learn the difference between the product that was bought and the company that has reg registered. Thank you, Commissioner. But Commission Kazimeras has talked about the problem of packaging and food wasting. Look at how many packaging there is. Even here we can see how many giant packages. Giant packages. I was looking while I was walking here. Business needs to sell as much as possible. It because it's a commercial business, because there are profits, because of the fact that there is a very aggressive commercial strategy. And then the consequences are wasteful. In fact, yes, the size of one of the packages is a serious problem. The size of the packaging is a problem and I hope that Ursul is going to tell us more about it. It's a really big problem, which is misleading the price. 
and all other things, it's very much affecting the consumer psychology. It seems that everyone is buying more and more, so they could save money, but then they uh, have to throw some of it away. Very good comment. Bread is also wasting at my place. What to do with the bread, professor? Um, coming back to the bread, I think bread is a, a very good example from highly industrialized food system countries like Germany and the UK. Um, the bakeries are dying, so you can hardly go and buy, and there are many cities where you can't go and buy your individual bread and rolls anymore. Um, good bread. You get very industrialized bread um, in the front shops of the supermarkets. The supermarkets are open until 10, 11, or e even 12 o'clock. Um, the, the bakers, or the so-called bakers, that provide the bread and bread similar products in the front shop are required to keep the whole um, selection of bread, the whole sortiment, for until, until the, sh the, the closure time. Can you imagine what happens with the rest? There's an enormous amount that goes out of the window. And I think that highlights a problem um, that industrialized food systems pose. We, they make the consumer used to having everything from everywhere in abundance available 24 hours a day, seven, seven days a week. And that is a big problem because the consumer is, my, I, I would say, Humans are lazy, at least I am lazy when I can. Yeah? Um, and, and we're getting used to this. And, but it is not, I would say, it's less the consumer's fault, or at least not more than half the consumer's fault, to waste food. We have a system that encourages us to waste food. You were saying it this morning. The usual, you know, um, buy one, get three offers. Or, the pineapple was a wonderful example. Do you know that a pineapple certainly takes three years before it's ripe? And in German supermarkets, you have it for two euro, let alone the water and the resources it needs. So we have a food system that provides us with far too much. We have a constant surplus in the system, and we deal basically just with the surplus in the system. That is a big problem. And I would often say, um, take the consumer out of the blame game the consumer is the end. Yes, the consumer wastes a lot. But let's look why the consumer wastes first. I talked about individual habits, you know, individualized lifestyles, blah, blah, blah. But the consumer is the end part of a system that provides constantly too much. Um, so where should it go? Professor, what are you doing when some food remains on your plate? What, I, can I what do you do with the leftovers? I try to use it up, I, and that is what we do with Slow Food. We do lots of workshop and action days, school modules for uh, young children, next generation, but also for us, I'm not so young anymore, so for almost my grandchildren, um, in order to waste, to cook differently. We have got used, particularly I would blame the television shows, and the cookbook industry to cooking as if we were shopping medicine in a pharmacy. Three grams here, half an onion there. Um, then we don't look at meat cuts. We have only expensive meat cuts anymore in supermarkets in Germany, in, in the UK. Everything that is nice, tasty and not affordable doesn't turn up anymore. People don't know what to do with it. So I think once a week, an event like clear out your fridge uh, once every half a year, cook everything what is beyond um, the sell-by date and all these things, these are actions. And I mean, in your culture, you certainly have a lot of so-called waste recipes. One wouldn't call them, they are traditional ones. We in Germany use old bread in very different varieties and this can be either kept or relearned and actually Slow Food provides that always as a sort of is an enjoyment activity. We do it together. We had a wonderful event end of April. We, we call it the disco soup, so young people mainly get together in hundreds of places in the world. 
and do an event on food waste, so against food waste. So they either collect on farms what, what is not, ready, not, not good enough for the market because of its aesthetic criteria, or do events. And I think Uganda was doing an event on three days harvesting, talking, cooking, and the other ones were doing uh, invite your friends and they should bring you their leftovers or what's beyond the sell-by date. And do cook together. Be, be daring. Follow your taste, follow your nose, rather than the recipe that says half an onion. What do you do with the rest? It's the waste of tomorrow. Thank you. Do you have questions? Do you want to ask something? Of course, the food bank. Hello, my name is Demante. I'm the food bank director. We are talking today about food waste. Will we make too much? Don't eat enough? ruin the food, but it seems to me that a much easier task is to change the understanding by thinking of oneself how to personally deal with the food, rather than changing the understanding in the industry. At this time, today we have been at a high-level forum, and we all talked about the fact that single mothers have children, they do not have enough money for yogurt, curd bars, or some kind of full-fledged protein food, but the food industry was not in that forum. Maybe associates, but those big companies that today have their own stands, they did not talk about the mothers who come to the food bank and whose children say to them, today we are going to eat. I think that is very important for us to speak and work with the food industry that, as I say, not one manager of the company could uh, sleep well that the bread he made wasn't consumed by the people, but thrown away. Similarly, if his yogurt is drained to the sewage system simply because it would be easier for them to process it like this, they should not sleep at all. You know, all the time we are talking with talking with food producers and the food industry, all the food, even still a good one, is called a waste. It's called food waste. So I think we should change our perception, we should put more responsibility into eating the food. It's, if it's already made or grown or produced, extra efforts should be made for it to reach the tables of the people. Thank you. Yes, you, please introduce yourself and speak. My name is Yolanta and I represent the food producers. And I want to share a couple of thoughts about big package, packaging. No one manufacturer will produce a large packaging unless it is in demand. The factory operates as long as it sells its products and demand for large packaging is available. The other thing is that talking like this, we remove the responsibility from the buyer, from the consumer. The factory made it, you don't have to buy it. Don't buy an, anything in big packaging, buy smaller ones or freeze half of the big ones. Yes, we don't sleep well, but look at the veterinary regulations about food waste. Ask what the factories does with the food waste. Personally, our factory could free the half of the district's breeders, but we are not allowed to do that. We have to get rid of the waste and even pay money to do that. About what kind of food saving are we talking if we are milk producers curd good curd cannot be given to chickens and has to be thrown away the regu regulations are very strict the fact that we have to throw throw away is absurd very good questions very good questions from both sides Yes, very good questions from both sides. Firstly, I would like to make a joke a bit that if there's no supply, there's no demand. You know, in the Holy Bible it says that the snake seduced Eve to try the apple. The apple was always there, hanging there, just being there. But Eve didn't want to try it until the snake appeared and con convinced her to do it. Yes, 
Advertising these days is very aggressive. Marketing is aggressive. It's provoking people and you can see sometimes how much effort is put into the advertising. They are trying to sell stuff to you, if not through your door, then through the windows or through the chimney. We have the same problem everywhere, in the consumer field, with the factories, the manufacturers, the advertising companies, also, as you correctly noticed, with the regulators for food safety. With regard to what is now possible to say about food waste that is not suitable for humans to be fed to the animals has already been put into effect in April. Pay attention. There's first step made already. The proteins in the meat is the tricky thing, badly handled for example, to feed the birds with bread or grain, it's possible. Meat industry is different. It's very difficult, but I think we'll find the answer what can be fed to the animals. Of course, we cannot ignore the food safety, because even one death would end up tragically. All the crises that happened before, that's what's making us careful. Talking with scientists, but the uh, there's the document, take a look at it, I'm afraid to quote uh, it wrong, but they have all the details in there. Now, coming back to the packaging issue, I really think that there's a commercial purpose in it. Because no, there is a profit, money, if the industry would be selfless, wouldn't go after the profit, they would go bankrupt. It means we have to think about how to move away from aggressive marketing and move on to other options. For example, slow food or short food chain fresh produce. Look, the committee has fixed the pro procurement laws. It is allowed for the municipalities to use them, which means they can buy food from a local market, from local farmers, local companies. Now, it is possible to shorten the food chain, which is good, because you as companies will need to put in any extra preservatives to keep the food good for longer, because it will be bought and used sooner, so there's opportunity for the short food chain to work. Commissioner, let's do it like this, since there's online questions as well, and questions here live from the audience, maybe the guest professor could answer it. All of them in one go, it's very difficult. Um, to, back to the food banks, um, the lady I think is not here anymore, but um, food banks are a fantastic way of, sort of, in a, in, a, in a social way of dealing with the surplus in the food system. But I, I will not stop asking always the question that bothers me a lot, and slow food also. The food banks shouldn't be a way of getting rid, solving the problem of the surplus of the food in the system, because the people who haven't got the money haven't got a choice, they have to take what's there. Um, and often slow food would say it's not food worth even considering. 
you know, sometimes you better eat the packaging, I think, before you get nutritional value uh, than the inside. Um, so there is a problem, and I think this shows very clearly that food is so interconnected with all our areas of society, um, the poverty problem can't be solved with food banks and the surplus in the food system. This is a poverty issue and this is a social pillar issue in the end. And I think as an ethical Western affluent societies, as we really are, we cannot afford ethically um, feeding the growing poor population uh, with food banks. Um, so that's the one thing. Although they are, of course, the best possible way because they at least allow that food designed for humans and destined for humans ends up with humans and not in a, in a biofuel composter or whatever. Um, the packaging, I would also say, it is civil society that had put up the pressure in the last couple of years so that food in supermarkets is getting increasingly more unpacked so that I can buy when I'm on my own this one onion I need in order to go back to the example. And I think this also shows us that movements like slow food, yes, and you're absolutely right, we promote alternative wise, ways of purchasing the organic box schemes, the community-supported agriculture, go directly to your farmer, go to farmer's markets. We support all of that in order to cut the middlemen out, to cut the chain very short, because a short chain avoids food waste, quite clearly, as I explained at the very beginning. And the other thing is, I'm always speaking out, civil society, dare to do what you're there for, you control in the end your politicians. So, in the end, it's you that have to put the pressure up, even when it comes to simple things like taking food out of packaging. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Our audience uh, member, Antanas, is saying that this discussion about uh, food waste is a joke and because he cannot survive from his minimal income, from his disability pension, hunger is his everyday companion and here we are talking about food waste. He is right. People who cannot live from their minimal income, they are feeling humiliated. That's why the food bank has also raised the problem. Also, the industry, the municipality, what to do that we could really take care and provide good quality food that would reach the people in need. Of course, this is the responsibility of the government and the parliament as well as the municipality together with the civil society and the manufacturers, they also have to listen to this problem, that this cry for help that would be heard. There's something wrong and it needs to be solved together. Manufacturers could go to the mayor and say, Antanas, come to us and I cannot give him food, so let's sit down and solve it. Uh, let me give microphone to audience. Yeah, just one example. I mean, I, I think in the United States there is something probably not everywhere and hopefully for much longer now. Um, there is something very sensible done. Um, people who live under the certain poverty line get vouchers to buy at farmers markets. Um, and I think this instigates also the, 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 the getting together of the producers and the people because, I mean, food always creates a social relationship between people anyway. Yeah? And it helps the producers to sell and it helps the consumers to get really good food rather than sometimes what food banks deliver. But as I said, it's, it's absolutely not right that uh, people who can't, can't afford to live from what they get at a pension or from, from what they earn as a salary. And we have increasingly more in Europe of those. Okay, uh, thank you. The person next to you, you wanted to say something? I wanted to say that it combines very important things. And the first is the conservation of natural resources. The second is the perception how much do you need? And the third thing, the temptation. I can show to my product, which I'm making a lot of years, and it is 
tempting a lot of people because it is a bunny. Inside there is a pouch with Lithuanian tea herbs. You can freeze the herbs into ice cubes and use them for a very long time. And the bunny can be used to store little things you have at home. The bunny is used from linen waste, thrown away by linen clothes manufacturer because it is too narrow to make clothes off, but it's just right to make my biz to my to make my bunnies. So the solutions are here in front of us, which is have to see them and use them. There's a lot of ways to reuse resources to help nature, how to protect the health and fellow humans so they wouldn't overeat, wouldn't overspend his hot earned money. Also, all the solutions for people who doesn't have anything, they are humorous to me because if a person is healthy and able, he should earn his food. Like you said, we could give the poor vouchers so they could choose exactly what they want and that the grain or oil from the food bank. Thirdly, a very important thing is that we are truly terminated from our homeland food and we are missing the connection one has by the shared table. It is very valuable. Thank you. Would anyone else like to react? Can I ask a question? Can you imagine how the Ministry of Agriculture starts developing farming lands in the main cities? Of course, I have been to New York City and have seen how people grow various vegetables and spices on their roofs. With modern technologies, everything is possible and doable in the city itself, closer to the target audience, fresh from the boy buyers. We can also talk about the short food chain. We need to be flexible. Humanity cannot avoid the manufacturing industry. 10 billion people, the food will stay very varied. But we can stimulate, encourage and motivate people to join and create those short food chains. The systems are there to collaborate and it is a good example. Our internet is full of projects and examples how to create and enable the short food chains that they could fulfill various needs, from chicken eggs to vegetables or fruits. Look at how many collective farming spots we have in Vilnius. They are all gone in the wind. But you know, what I have stayed? The apple trees that are left, but they are not taken care of, they overflow with apples, which goes to waste, so we need to encourage it. But of course, there's competition, new commercial strategy, it's very hard to implement. Look at the farmer markets all closing down now, why? Because of the competition, it kills them. It means we need to support them, motivate them. Let me tell you that we truly need to bring back the connection between the food producers and consumers. Because the alienation is tragic and has horrible consequences. Our discussion will finish soon, we don't have much time, but we still have four people who have questions they want to ask. So please, introduce yourself and ask. Hello, my name is Aurelia and I'm a journalist from Delphi, my writing is related to those topics and I wanted to ask, what do you think and is it possible to change the laws regarding the supermarkets so they wouldn't have to adhere to the hierarchy of food waste avoidance, to give food to the food bank, the things that can be given away, give out to the farmers to feed the livestock, what's not suitable to them to make compost or give away to produce biogas, to make the hierarchy mandatory instead of just recommended prices with laws or regulations. We can find solutions in various countries. I'll give you an example from Italy. They enacted a law which is called the Merciful Samaritan. The regulations make it easier for a lot of problems you mentioned to be solved. 
There's still a lot to discuss, but of course, I recommend to enact something similar in Lithuania and in other countries. There's always space for improvement, and of course, some regulations on national level could make things easier. And as I mentioned today in the forum, the documents which can make the process easier, but they need to be approved by the Lithuanian Parliament. Furthermore, about the food which isn't suitable for the livestock, but also chickens, fish. Once again, there's template document which could be adapted by the parliament. There's also more possibilities with the dates of on the labels. If I ask you what does Furthermore, about the food which isn't suitable for the livestock, but also chickens, fish. Once again, there's a template document which could be adapted by the parliament. There's also more possibilities with the dates on the labels. If I ask you, what does best before and suitable until mean? And what is the difference between them? What would you say? Best before is food safety and suitable until is quality. In other words, in other words, you can use it after the best before date, maybe the quality will be different, but you can use it. But 68% of people doesn't understand this. They look at the best before date, they confuse it with suitable until, and throw away still good and usable produ product. We are now working on a list of produce for which the best before shouldn't even apply. For example, how can water have a best before date? What will happen to the bottle of water if the best before date says 5th of November 2019? Does it mean that it's undrinkable on the 6th of November and I have to throw it away? Understood, there's a lot of hard to explain things. Of course, there's still the short food chains. Don't think that everyone can use vouchers. No. The role is very diverse, there's loads of different people in the food bank is doing a great service in the whole Europe. I can tell you of a million different cases of what is happening in different families. Which solutions to yes. the problem you see? Um, it is not a real solution to the problem to make it compulsory. I'm, I'm, I'm really doubtful about it because it cements basically or puts in concrete the surplus in the system. Um, that is the problem. We keep forgetting that we have a surplus in the system and we should rather in, be more creative in inventing of how to very flexible um, come to that what someone else said before. We need actually to know what a human being really needs. Um, we we don't, un don't seem to understand this anymore. And there is, I think, really some creativity and lots of brain power necessary. Uh, of course, nothing should be thrown away, you know, I don't want to dispute that. Uh, but whether a regulation that makes it obligatory, like in France, to give it away, I'm not sure it does the trick, because the, um, the help organizations, the food banks, they are volunteers. So you oblige the volunteers to do something which they do voluntarily. Do they have the necessary equipment? Can they take all food? Can they take food that is actually uh, with a real um, food safety date? And all of these things come into question that are not easy to solve, but one shouldn't throw it out, clearly. Yes, we have three last questions and I'm going to ask you to be as short as possible. Hello, my name is Marko Lavichus, the director of Marian Bolespiano Conservative Commissioner. The problem we are facing is understandable, but what about the lack of workforce and also lack of awareness? In the last couple of years, the school have shown quite an interest into factories and manufacturers. A lot of them bring kids in for us to talk out and to show them around, especially smaller kids. I had opportunities to talk to them and to their understanding of how food is produced is below average. Wouldn't it be useful to use regulations? I understand now we have advanced technologies in the classrooms, but still, wouldn't it be useful to at least spend 10 hours a year for the school children in the primary school to learn about agrarian culture? Arbant, 
I think it would vastly improve quality of life and awareness. As you mentioned before, I think it would help to understand how food is grown and manufactured and would give a different perspective into a whole industry. I totally agree with you, all to 100%. We need to... Look, I did an experiment in Kaunas, in my high school centers. I suggested they start adapting like the Danish school does. The Danish. They do it quite simply. They keep the connection with the fishermen, with the farmers, the manufacturers, when the farmers have vegetables not suitable to sell in the shops of the markets, they give, a, they give it away to the schools and children, cut them up, make their own food in class. It helps kids to learn. Now, I suggested the same to the mayor of Kaunas, but to say at the least, his reaction was very slow. It helps the kids to learn what is what. Look, ordinary kids now would tell you that they could tell you that the milk comes from the factory. I'm flabbergasted. That there's thousands of examples like that. Kids come to the conventions, like to a zoo, to look at the livestock. So we have to do something. I'm 100% sure about it. The, the, the best investment for the future, and that is not a short-term one, the best investment for the future is actually um, having schools with gardens and kitchens and a little bit of farm animal. That is the investment in the future we really need, that long term is going to save us enormous amounts of money when we think of our health system. The health system is burdened with, with, um, with the consequences of, of, of wrong diets. And it's not the consumer's fault necessarily only. Yeah? It, has, it has quite other reasons, I don't want to go into that now. But that is actually the investment of the future. And I would say a, a wise government, not a clever, a wise government would try to invest more in that rather than uh, being afraid of having to spend more and more and more on diet-related diseases. Hello, my name is Aurelia and I'm an architect, not a farmer, but I'm very much involved with this cause, with slow food, slow fashion, slow movement, etc. I am very grateful for this discussion. I agree with the majority of the thoughts expressed here, but I have one big question, which is, I understand that we have to start with the consumer to minimize the waste, live slower, move more, shorten the chain, but also build the connection between the producer and the consumer. Build this direct link and help keep this link. But how to do it in our country when we don't receive a lot of support? Our private farms are dying because of the invasion of the big corporations. And I had a discussion with the farmers last week about the farmer markets which have appeared and are now quickly disappearing in Lithuania. Why are the small businesses suffering? And I do agree that we have to start with small children, with education, kindergartens, schools, but also with agrarian culture in the city. We need to resurrect it, but it shouldn't only be done by us, the consumers, the government should help too, I think. We are in dire need of government support to make agrarian culture fashionable again, to make it cool to be a farmer, make our own cheese, our own butter, milk. It has to receive support and pride. That's when I think we will lead healthier life. I do agree that now is the time to have this conversation. Lithuania has a good chance to discuss the new general agricultural policy. We, we managed to put in the aspects of healthy food production the opportunities for small businesses because at the moment, 
80% of support goes to big farms. But this is happening in all of the European Union. We have counted that the small businesses are disappearing. The territories are getting smaller and with them biodiversity and cultural heritage is disappearing too. It's also because of the new technologies which allows you to live in the city but monitor what you do in your property many kilometers away. So that general agricultural policy document is finished. So now is the time to have this discussion. We need to provoke these discussions so we can make them look all this at the city as an opportunity for agriculture too. Because as it stands, if you are living in the city, you cannot register as a farmer. There's time, we just need to do it. Thank you. And actually, yes, it's, it's part of the, at the moment, unfortunately, part of the agricultural poli policy because we haven't got a food policy in Europe, which connects everything. At the moment, it's agricultural policy, and I think it's high time that the agricultural policy moves away from those um, direct payments where just the big farmers in the end benefit, finds a much finer system to uh, reward those who produce sustainable food, slow food would say, who produce good, clean and fair food. And these are the small farmers because they are so important for our countryside, for, as you said, our agrobiodiversity and our cultural diversity, and hence for all of us, for our cultural orientation in the end. And we cannot afford to lose that. If that is gone, then I would say we are really doomed as humanity. The homogenization, the standardization um, makes those macrocultures die out and, and we have to protect those and we need really wise politicians who help us to protect those. You are absolutely right, this can't get lost. I want to pay attention to a very important thing that we on our own can see what we are divided into ethnographic culture. Not the form, not the field, but some, some strange thing which sounds nice, but which has no connection to the realities of life. You will not see a person singing and working in the fields these days. It means the problem is somewhere else. We need to connect ethnographic and agrarian cultures into general agri agricultural policy. We also need to have clear goals about our nutritional policies, because we need diets, we need nutrition, we need food profiling, and wait. Why should I give up? Let me say, we need to have in Lithuania nutrition policies, various ones, for the vegans and vegetarians and everyone like me who eats everything. But nutrition policy needs to happen and it needs to be adjusted to various age groups and combined into comprehensible agricultural policy. Thank you. And the last question from the audience. Well, I am from one of the activities groups and we are very serious about the problem as consumers and uh, as producers. And we are very motivated to combine these parts so that the produce could reach the consumer without any interruptions or third-party involvements. All of us here, we understand that you are, what you are saying, but we want different decisions from you than those made in the European Union, because not everything they do can be directly adapted to Lithuania. We need Lithuania to have a simpler outlook into things, because now it's not possible to catch everyone individually who is making mistakes. Of course, hygiene and sanitary regulations are a necessity. No one is arguing about that, but I have real examples how a community gets a permit to cook and here come the government officials, looks at them and starts issuing fines about wrong chemicals in use and so on. Even though everything is clean, everything is tidy, we are cooking for the kids during summer camp, but they 
Then we cannot do it anymore. We cannot take produce from farmers because he doesn't have some kind of permit. We are ourselves making food for the kids the same way we would make it at the home. We are teaching them. And then we are told to talk with cafeterias, to buy fruit from them, to get them to provide lunch for our camp. I want to talk about that. You are correct by giving these examples. It just once again illustrates that we need to turn regulations upside down so that the official government's facilities would be more consulting, more advising than controlling. Right now, I can't tell you how to do that, but we need to do it in the future. But it doesn't only depend on us, for example, for European Union support, but we have member countries who have made massive projects out of that support, where if you're a small business or a small farm, you can fill in some forms online and get the financial support you need in a couple of minutes. Everything is easily explained their papers are done in five minutes. So look, there's a person and that person lives in some kind of region or municipality. He doesn't live on the moon, that's clear for me, so maybe we can find the solution in the municipality. What do you think? Why not? Okay, consumer rights also have regulations, they cannot be used for wrong reasons. My advice is to write to Consumer Association on National Food Veterinary Service, on Ministry of Agri Agriculture and solve these questions. We had a discussion about honey and bees, so I know that there's a lot of problems. But let's not say that everything is wrong in Lithuania. We cannot say that, because it isn't like that. Things can be changed, we just need to do it. Thank you. I really like this live format when people can ask the questions themselves without any intermediaries to the European Commissioner, ask what they care about. I would like to finish this discussion with the same question we started. What solutions do you see for this problem? What actions will be successful? We talked today that the culture has to change, new generations will bring more awareness and maybe even the solutions. But what do you think about can be done more to drastically improve the situation? Well, theoretically, we need a multi-level approach. We, we talked actually on multi-levels. We have the, the politicians on the highest level, on the EU level. You have your national level, which often, I must say, is not as liberal as the EU level is. Yeah? EU is often blamed for something uh, it, isn't, it isn't guilty of. It's often the national governments that point the finger at Brussels and say, oh, Brussels did, it, they did, did that to us. And it's often not true. Uh, for example, raw milk, how, how you can distribute raw milk. The, there is one legislation for all, but the national governments makes it completely different. And in Germany, we have one of the most rigid laws. So that's that level. If you have people who understand this, it's very good to push them forward. If then you have the national levels and the regional levels, but then it comes down to us as communities and, you, and human beings. And if we can't do those levels, then I would say, know your farmer, tend a garden, um, grow your food yourself, pass it on to the next generation, and be aware, in the end, you have power as a consumer. Because with every fork you put in your mouth, you decide what food system perpetuates itself. If we go always to the supermarkets and the discounters for whatever reason, I don't want to blame anyone. I've set my foot in there sometimes. Well, then I support them. But if I go to the farmer's market or I go to my farm once a week where I buy basically everything I need for the next week, well, then I support them. And I think having an awareness of that we are the ones who should 
in solidarity align ourselves with those whose food we like and whose food we want to continue in the next 10, 15 years, 20 years, then we should do that. And often, less food at home and in the fridge means better food at home and in the fridge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you a lot for coming. Thank you to the Commissioner and thank you to our guests from Germany. We can ask questions, we can put pressure onto our government, but let's quickly think and discuss what we can personally do, talk about it with our close family, with our friends, our neighbors and acquaintances, and I think the situation will improve. Thank you a lot for that.